Hi, I'm Jimmo from the Media Lab and Hyundai Motor Company. Today, Dr. Nesca L. Howes and I will present our work on ambient breathing. Before the pandemic, people in the United States drive an hour a day on average commute. This everyday driving holds many complexities that include stressors. To improve stress management, we designed a just-in-time breathing intervention that uses multi-sensory feedback. We evaluated its efficacy in a driving simulator. Voluntary regulation of breathing has long been used as a method for controlling affected states. In-car breathing interventions have been proposed to regulate the breathing pattern of a driver and to calm or maintain their calm states. Paradise et al. engaged drivers in a simulator with haptic stimulation and voice guidance that influence their breathing, facilitating slow and regulatory breathing signals while maintaining safe driving performance. However, Jeff et al. found that excessive workload from driving and conscious breathing practices can cause unwanted driving mistakes. Gande Harion and Picard proposed the possibility of subconscious breathing influence of people under demanding tasks in an office environment without degrading their working performance. In this study, we developed a novel closed-loop breathing intervention system with three sensory stimulations, auditory, visual, and weight. The present closed-loop system recognizes the driver's breathing rate using the bar harness chest strap. The system turns on sensory stimulations when a driver's breathing rate increases to higher than 120% of their mean breathing rate. When the intervention system is on, it provides uni- or multi-stimulations, which modulates at the mean breathing rate. We propose that the uninstructed subtle sensory feedback can subconsciously guide the breathing pattern of a driver while maintaining safe driving behavior. The following hypothesis contains the expected results comparing the multi- and unisensory intervention with and without a driver's choice of intervention selection, comparing manual and autonomous driving, and comparing giving the intervention with or without instructions. To evaluate the proposed hypothesis, we designed two user studies. The first study consisted of four driving segments in the manual driving mode with four different conditions of the interventions, control auditory, auditory plus visual, and auditory plus wind intervention. The second user study consisted of both manual driving as well as autonomous driving. Before starting the driving task of this second study, we provided a session to each participant to choose their preferred pattern of the intervention. Based on their selection, we provided four driving sessions in a randomized order. Manual driving without and with intervention, autonomous driving without and with intervention. Finally, we disclosed how to consciously engage with the sensory stimulation to regulate breathing and provided a short training session. Then we conducted the fifth session testing manual driving with the intervention. 26 subjects participated in the first study and 36 in the second one. We only consider the complete data set for analysis here. The table describes the two cohorts. Both studies involved a balanced cohort in terms of gender, age ranges, and number of novice users of the simulator. In this work, we analyzed the number of crashes, infraction, breathing rate, electrodermal activity, and the post study surveys. Here we start by presenting evidence on how simulated driving mimics the real world setting. Actually, the car simulator has several features that make it somewhat realistic. And with that, we offered as many training sessions as the participant wanted to get used to the simulator so that any crashes were less likely to be due to its novelty. Then we begin the studies where we examine the crashes and the serious offenses. We found that they are not significantly different than zero. We then compare the efficacy of the intervention, the unisensory versus the multisensory one. Examining safety, the infractions were significantly different across the conditions, mainly higher for the auditory intervention compared to the multisensory and control condition. No significant differences were found in the normalized breathing rate, time duration below goal breathing rate, reported workload and focus level, as well as the stress, pleasure, and energy levels. When we ask the participant to select their preferred feedback, more than half of them chose the auditory and wind intervention, indicating that the wind was soothing and refreshing. We verify that giving the choice of selection did not significantly improve their engagement here. However, the participant reported significantly higher pleasure when comparing study one and two. The intervention training helped increase the driver engagement, as you can see in the first row of box plot. The effect arousal was significantly lower after the training. 
This might be explained by the fact that the training session helped the participant by reducing uncertainty and stress. We were also interested in the influence of the automated driving, which has compared the aggregated data for manual and autonomous driving modes within the control condition. We noticed that the breathing rate, workload, stress were significantly lower for the automated condition, while the pleasure was the same. We compared the data between autonomous driving with and without breathing guide. We found that a significantly better engagement in the breathing for the autonomous compared to the manual one. For future study, we plan to consider different study designs and driving context. We notice in this work different engagement level depending on the driving context. For example, there were, was better engagement with the breathing intervention after waiting at the traffic light, as you can see in the normalized breathing rate decrease here. We want also to test if we can generalize our findings to the real world setting. Thanks.